Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We are back with the makeshift microphone once again, and today I'm going to be talking about how you can get an A star in A level biology. So I'm mainly going to give you guys a few general tips on how you can do well in biology and then I'm going to finish off with a bit on the essay itself and how you can improve on that. And this is coming from someone who at the start of year 12 was getting around like 14, 15 out of 25 on the essays, which is decent, but it's not where I want it to be to getting a 24 out of 25 at the very end of the year. So I think I've got a few good pieces of advice and a proper plan in what you can do for the essay, which can hopefully get you at least 20 marks out of 25 every single time. Now stick around until the end of the video for some tips on the essay we're going to go into a few general tips first and then we'll move on to what you can do for the essay the first tip we have is three tips really understand learn and practice so these are three main things you need to be doing each time you have a biology lesson and you go over a new biology topic because in biology as you probably have heard and if you're already doing a level biology you probably already know it's a very content heavy subject you've got lots of new information every single lesson so you really need to be able to juggle that every single time and the best way to do this is to have a set structure and how you deal with the information that you learn so understand learn and then practice understanding is purely just being in the lesson and making sure that what you're learning is making sense this is is very important especially when you get near the end and things start getting really confusing near the beginning of a level biology there's not as much it's more just learning information but as you go through the course you do get a few topics here and there that actually require a bit of understanding before you can actually learn what's going on so that's the first part and usually what would happen is if i don't understand a topic if i come home after a lesson and it still doesn't make proper sense i would usually watch a youtube video explaining that topic and i'd also use our youtube video to try and start making an idea of what things i should make flashcards out of which is the second part of this list so after understanding you come into the learning phase and this is really really important for a level biology because lots of content so all that content needs to be learned there's lots of different things that you just need to have in your head to be able to do questions for me i make flashcards and this is the way i use to learn the information i do it through a software named remnote which i'll have in the top right corner of the screen right now in case you want to know more about it if you haven't heard about it already but you can do this in a variety of different ways you can use youtube videos or textbooks or whatever but as long as you're doing something active that actually forces that information into your head that's the important part you don't even need to make sure that all of it is properly in your head because by the time you come to the practice phase the last part of this three-step process you'll know what you've learned and what you haven't learned and if you're finding out that most of the questions you're getting wrong because you just don't know the information then you have to rethink your way of learning the information in the first place there's a lot of different ways you can get questions wrong when you're doing the practicing phase which usually you should do when a test is coming up but you can do a few practice questions here and there after you cover a topic as well just so you know what's going on and you know the type of questions they can ask from you but this in my opinion is more important when you get a topic test coming up very soon perhaps in about like a few days time or a week's time and for you to just go over a few exam questions on that topic or when you get to the end of the year to go over proper past papers and to be able to see what you got wrong and what you did right and the important part about doing practice is not only having that information in your head but being able to apply it to the different contexts because because for biology it is extremely extremely difficult to know what they are asking from you sometimes and sometimes you know what they're asking from you but you just don't phrase it in the way they want you to so this is the next part practicing is important and you need to do it in a way where you can actually learn from your past mistakes and be able to answer questions correctly next time and for you to do this i personally recommend to categorize your errors so whenever you make a mistake in an, an exam question or a past paper to categorize it and see exactly what type of mistake it is whether it's a mistake because you just didn't know the content or whether it's an application mistake where you just knew the information but you just didn't know that you had to apply it in this context or it might be a communication error where you knew the information and you knew what to write but you just didn't phrase it in the way they wanted you so you forgot one key word that you really need so for example when you're talking about enzymes to talk about the fact that the shape is complementary for example but sometimes you might just forget to do that and this is why the practice is so important because even if you know the content sometimes the questions can be so so painful to do because you You'd think you got it right but they, it's just like you didn't hit the key points and then you just get it all wrong so that's really really important to categorize why you're getting questions wrong and to see what common mistakes you're making and overall the more times you do this the better you get at being able to answer these type of questions and you'll really quickly start seeing some sort of improvement as you do this as the year progresses and also whenever you're marking past papers or exam questions or anything make sure you're as harsh as possible to yourself because there's a lot of times that you could just be like i would have put that and like it's along the right lines but if it's not exactly what 
what the mark scheme says, just mark it as wrong so you can have it in your head. Because if you mark something as right, you're not going to focus on it as much as if you mark it wrong. That way you'll actually know that you've got a bit of practicing to do in this area. And if you don't hit the mark scheme properly, you might not even get the mark in the real thing. So it's better to be safe than sorry and actually take away your mark just so you know for next time the way they want you to phrase it and to be able to do it in that way and hopefully secure your mark if you get that same thing in a test sometime later. Now following on from the idea of practice and doing past paper questions, another really important thing to do whenever you're doing these type of questions is to learn the mark schemes. What I've started to do is make flashcards on the mark schemes themselves. And so I'd have the exam question as the question, and then I'd have the mark scheme points as the answer. And I'd try and memorize them word for word. And this is really important for the generic six mark questions where it's like describe transcriptions, for example, uh, in protein synthesis. If that's just an entire six marker, you can sometimes get very carried away and start writing things that are irrelevant to the question. But if you had memorized a six marker on it beforehand, which you might have found on like PMT, for example, doing exam questions, you can literally just secure yourself all six marks and you can move on knowing that you got all of them if you can do that it will save yourself a lot of time and you'll probably get yourself a few more marks as well okay one more tip that i have for biology as a general subject is to know exactly what you need to know a lot of the times in a biology lesson, especially according to your specification, there's only a set amount of stuff you need to know for each topic. And there can be a few bits of information that's not entirely needed from you to be able to do questions. So let's assume it's on protein synthesis. There might be in AQA some things that you don't explicitly need to know about compared to Edexcel or OCR or whatever example that you're doing. So that's why it's always important that when you're making flashcards or when you're going over content at home to have that specification by your side, if you don't know what the specification is, is, I'll have a link down below along with a lot of other resources if you want to check them out in the description as well. And this is also really useful for required practicals. If you didn't know this, some of the required practicals you don't even need to know the methods for. Only a very few amount of the practicals you need to actually be very familiar with how the method works. And for all the other ones you don't even need to know or be able to replicate the method in an exam question. So make sure you check that out. I'll have some links down below in the description but it's also really important to check out what you need to know for each practical and it does show in the specification what things are required from you from each practical and so making sure you don't waste your time focusing on things that aren't even going to get asked about in the real thing once again it's going to save you loads of time and it can help you focus on the things that you actually need to so those were the tips for biology as a whole now i'm going to talk a bit about the essay in paper three, in A-level biology at least, I don't know if it's the same for other examples, but I'm pretty sure you have an essay in every single one. You get an essay where you talk about a specific biology topic and you get a choice of two for AQA at least. I'm not entirely sure how it works for other examples, but I'm assuming you'll have a choice of options as well. Now with the essay, it's really easy to get carried away and start talking about things that are very irrelevant. So I'm going to give you guys a few very practical pieces of advice in how you can do well on this essay. I am just going to pull up my own essay and I'll have my essay in the description below if you want to read it the one that got 24 out of 25 and I'll just give you guys a bit of insight in why I think I got that score and exactly what you can do to get a score like that as well if that's your aim now obviously for me my aim is to just get at least 20 out of 25 that would be great but this just happened out of nowhere so let me talk about the first part of this essay which is the plan the plan for the essay is so so important it's not like an English plan where you just quickly note down in which paragraph you're going to talk about which thing. You need to be really, really detailed with this plan because it can really save you from going on a tangent that's just not required from you and potentially losing out on marks. So the first thing you need to do is plan and properly plan. So what I got in my question for the essay, the one I got 24 in, was about proteins. So what I did in my plan is talk about all the different places you can find proteins. And that is just really, really important. Examples are so so, so important you're going to hear me talk about this quite a lot now i just went over all the different parts of the specification as of year 12 and just jotted down where you could find proteins and obviously there's so many places where you could find proteins. so i made a huge list of different things i could talk about and it's really important for you to talk about a range of different things and from all sorts of different areas of the specification so let's assume you know how for year 12 at least you've got like those four main topics you've got biological molecules you've got cells you've got organisms and exchange and then you've 
you've got genetic variation or whatever it's called for the fourth one try and pick out something from every single topic and to be able to talk about this whole variety of different areas of interest because if you just stick on one topic and talk about it a lot in a lot of detail that's good but it's not good enough especially for the essay and you need to spend a good chunk of time on this plan don't just rush straight into writing make sure you have a very clear idea of what you're going to talk about in your essay before you actually start it so just make a list of everything you can think about of the essay title so for me proteins i talked about all the different places i can find proteins so like enzymes and i then listed some enzymes it's always about examples you get enzymes put examples of enzymes you get examples of enzymes you could perhaps put examples of where those enzymes are found so it's just like you're really trying to put as many examples as you can in this plan and then you can figure out which things you're going to include in your essay and which things you're not now when you start your essay the one really important thing to not fall into is to go into a tangent that you just don't need to go into Basically, it's really important to stick to what you're going to talk about, then move on to a new part of the topic and just continue doing that rather than talking way too much about one specific thing and then forgetting to talk about anything else. So for proteins, rather than dedicating an entire paragraph on just what proteins are and like just that kind of thing, I embedded it into the writing and I made sure that it was always full of examples. So I put the examples first, then I put the explanations and everything. Rather than have explanations and examples separate, I made sure that everything was very much interwoven and you can read my essay in terms of how I did this but obviously to do well in this essay you need to have a lot of detail in terms of the terminology and making sure you can show off as much as you can in terms of what you know and not sticking to basic GCSE things make sure you always delve down into the A-level side of things and to always talk about why things are important this is probably the biggest thing for the essay you can't just say proteins are important because enzymes are a type of protein. You have to then say why enzymes make proteins so important. So what's the importance of enzymes? Let's assume you say enzymes are important because they can be found in the digestive system, for example, and then you can list like amylase. That's not enough. You need to then say why amylase is important. What is the point of having that enzyme there? And then continue going and going and going until you've fully broken down that entire thing. Don't use the word important to show why it's important. Don't just tell us it's important. And it's really important to just continue showing something's important until you've gone all the way to the very bottom and you can't continue going and then to move on to a new part of the topic and just do this so many times that it just becomes really natural at that point so overall your essay has to always revolve around this sense of importance and you're trying to always answer the question for example, as my essay question was the biological importance of proteins, just explaining what a protein is in one paragraph does not answer the question in any sort of way, shape or form. So you need to be able to link that explanation with the importance. And to do that, you have to bring in examples and show why those examples are important and show what makes those things that make the examples important, why they are important and just continue going down. And I think you get what I mean at this point. Now, the one other thing that you need to know about these essays is that getting 24 or 25 or like 23 is really really hard because you need to not only have the stuff that you know but you need to also bring in knowledge that is outside of the a-level specification this can be really really difficult and if you don't get it that's fine you can still get a really high score if you do everything else i've told you but what i actually did before my exam was i went to chat gpt right and i just asked it like to give me some prompts of things that I could research about a bit and to learn as just something I could just jot down into my essays if I needed to. Now obviously don't use artificial intelligence to write essays for you or to write essay plans for you because that's not going to help you at all but it is a nice way of just getting a bit of inspiration and things you could potentially talk about as an extra bonus into your essays. If you try and memorize like very general things that usually come up every single time so for example you can memorize something to do with proteins because you can almost always link something to proteins and then you can bring in your example that's outside of the specification right if you just memorize like a list of different things like that it doesn't have to be in too much detail but the more detail the better obviously and if you can just chuck those into your essays but make sure that they are somewhat relevant to the essay and to not just put them in for the sake of it because that could potentially backfire that can really really help and that's also one of the reasons why i think i did so well as well and i asked my teacher why i didn't get 25 
out of 25 rather than 24 out of 25 just to see what I'd need to do to get that other mark and what he said was simply to just add more stuff outside of the specification so it's really really important and it's an essential thing that you need if you want to get full marks and yeah that's pretty much it for the essay one thing I want to also say is that make sure that whenever you're writing something into your essay to try and ask yourself how this relates to the question don't even write a single sentence if you don't think it relates to the question just just don't do it okay so let's do a quick little summary we first talked about understanding learning and practicing and why it's important to have this set structure whenever you're going into a biology lesson whenever you're coming out and going over that information and that's probably one of the best things you can do to make sure that information sticks in your head then learning the mark schemes is always very important especially for biology where sometimes the mark schemes can be the main reason you don't get the mark because you just didn't phrase it the way the mark scheme wanted you to and then to not waste time learning irrelevant pieces of information but to stick to things that you know you need to know and to do that by using the specification and making sure that everything you learn is actually directly linked to the specification or at least you know what parts are and what parts aren't so you know when you're putting in into your essay for example stuff that's not actually in the specification itself and then we talked a bit about the essay and how it's important not to go on a tangent and it's also very important to make a good detailed plan and to actually dedicate quite a bit of time on that plan and also the fact that adding in a bit of information outside of the specification can really help with your essay as well sometimes if you're doing chemistry for example you can put in knowledge that you know from chemistry if it relates to the topic that you're talking about and for the biology mark scheme it is technically outside of the specification so it can really help in that sense as well so you can do that as well and yeah so if you guys want some resources and stuff i'll link them down below if i can find any but apart from that that's it i really hope you guys do well in your exams and best of luck for the future and i'll see you guys very very soon bye for now